Well, today, Halifax Regional Council is debating the idea of a rental registry for landlords. It would be created through a bylaw that would require most landlords to register with the city. The CBC's Haley Ryan spoke with a couple of people about this. One of them, Kevin Russell, is executive director of the Investment Property Owners Association of Nova Scotia. And the first voice you will hear is Hannah Wood. She's the Halifax chair for ACORN. That group advocates for people living on low income. There are short-term and long-term benefits. So one of the short terms is just being on an informed basis with who your landlord is, as he wishes to be on an informed basis of who you're with. Um, having more serious complaints be made because people will not have a, have a fear of retaliation. So those two, I think, will have an immediate and beneficial result. But one of the long-term things is to maintain buildings because one of the reasons we have so many rent evictions is buildings that have been allowed to fall into such a state of disrepair that only a large-scale, reno- large-scale renovation can save them, whereas if maintenance were actually being kept up and enforced, buildings wouldn't fall into such a great state of repair, of disrepair. So there's the long-term benefits of better maintaining the housing stock that we have through naming, shaming, and enforcement, and that will keep more affordable housing in our housing stock, as opposed to buildings being allowed to fall apart, renovated, and then reopened for double the rent, which is happening constantly. Mm-hmm. And it looks like, yes, so to, like you say, that proactive enforcement of building codes and fire mm-hmm. codes is very important to this. And they do say that there will be some staff attached to this. And I'm just yeah, wondering, that's key. yeah, that's, that's very key. key. So two staff will be for this year. And I'm just wondering, mm-hmm. I know that this is a very tight budget year and uh, the councillors are already mm-hmm. debating about what to cut. What would your message mm-hmm. be to them about why these staff would be very important for this year? Well, (laughs) to be honest, we recommended they charge landlords for this and let them pay for it. They have chosen to not go that route. So if they run out of money for running this, this, we'll say the same thing to them that we said in the beginning. Let the landlords pay for this registry because this would be a tax write-off for them as a licensing or registry cost. And so it wouldn't really hurt them, but it would help the city run it a lot. So if the city can't get it from their coffers, uh, they know where they can get it. What are your thoughts on seeing kind of specific (sighs) standard, uh, you know, really put in there that there will be, you know, working plumbing, there will be doors that can lock. (laughs) It seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? It seems like something you would have thought was always there. Um, These standards upgrades are extremely important, and we've been pushing for them for years. And this is actually the second time that that standards have been upgraded since we started putting the pressure on the city in 2014 to do that. So ACORN has been, you know, right kind of in the in the meat and in the nitty gritty of this issue for a long time. And we're happy to see it because basically we have been running with a system of housing that was not regulated enough. And so really we are just catching up regulatorily to something that has been long underlooked at. Because really, what is a bigger determiner of health than the home that you live in and its standards of health, right? It's obviously crucial that homes be healthy for people to live in. And we as a society pay for it when they aren't. How are you feeling to see this finally come together? And and what are your thoughts on it? Well, Haley, uh, we we took a look at the document that was uh, attached to the agenda of the of the uh, of tomorrow's meeting, and uh, quite frankly, we're we're a bit disappointed in the sense that uh, we still mainly believe that existing bylaws that are in place aren't properly being enforced, and if they were, uh, there'd be no reason to bring uh, this this bylaw in. This is a, uh, a very expensive undertaking, and we feel that uh, taxpayers' money could be better spent in other places, given the fact that there are already existing bylaws that can be enforced. And again, we're also under the guise of the Residential Tenancies Act, which uh, which we uh, can also where, where tenants can also go to have their uh, issues uh, heard and adjudicated. I think the what the staff argument and from you know rental advocates say that having a registry that will allow the city to be more proactive in you know checking up on fire codes and you know the standards that we have that they will know exactly who to go to where to go to. Yeah, well, we know that uh, from from our members who have purpose-built rental buildings, 
uh, they know where those those uh, those um, uh, apartment buildings are and where the owners are. We, they are annually inspected uh, for fire code violations, and and by law enforcement show up every once in a while uh, when there there are issues at the property. And and we and there's no problem that that we can see there. Is there a segment of the population or of the rental housing market that's not uh, that that's problematic? And and I would say that would be the uh, buildings with three units and under because there's no requirement in place for those uh, uh, buildings to have um, uh, annual inspections or uh, or, or deal with uh, uh, bylaw only only when required. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this might get at a, a bit of a gap then. Well, it, they could look at it that way for sure. I mean, but you know, this this is a costly undertaking that uh, that uh, you know that 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 is not required at this time, particularly in the sense that you know our industry has been hammered under the provincial uh, regulation of the two percent rent cap. Uh, what is happening in the smaller rental market uh, with the smaller rental market uh, uh, owners is that they're leaving the business. It's no longer a business that they're choosing to be in because it's not, it's not, they're not able to uh, uh, make economic sense out of the business model anymore. They can't, uh, you know, uh, get a rent increase to cover their uh, operating costs, which have spiraled out of control. And uh, and so it's very problematic. And when you add this layer of the uh, rental uh, registry on them at this time, this could well be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back, and people just throw up their hands and leave the uh, leave the industry at a time when we require more rental product. Our surveys show that at least twelve thousand rental units are at risk of being sold back into the home ownership market, which means they'll be removed from the from the rental market, uh, which will reduce the uh, uh, rental inventory, particularly among the affordable rental housing. Can you walk me through why uh, a rental registry would push um, owners out of the out of the rental system. I mean, there there as of now, there's no fee attached to this new registry, so yeah. it would just be some registering for once once a year, or actually just once at all, uh, unless anything yeah. changes. So, how would this push away rental rental property owners? Well, the fact is that there will be a, a, there's always administrative costs associated with the registry. There's going to be the cost of managing it and, and, and making sure things are up to date. It will it will there will be in costs, but more importantly, they're going to be brought into a a, a, a series of uh, potential um, uh, of conflict with with the fact that that. Uh, being involved in, in in something that they've never been involved with before, and it's going to be quite shocking to them once they start learning uh, and understanding what it means to be under a registry and 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 to be under the uh, inspection process. It's going to be quite onerous and expensive to uh, to uh, keep uh, to keep these buildings uh, maintained. What would what would you say to the the advocate's point that that's the important thing that there should be transparency and that these buildings should be kept to a you know a high standard? Well, the vast majority of buildings do operate under a high standard. They are local owners that care about their about their community, and care about the people they're renting to, and they make health and safety a priority. It is a small percentage of landlords. Uh, that could be considered rogue, that are causing uh, pr- problems, and, the, and, and it would be easier to deal with the smaller issue uh, of, of, of a, uh, rather than uh, looking at, at the whole industry as being uh, operating in the same manner of, of, as a small group of landlords that uh, seem to be causing the problem. Kevin Russell is Executive Director of the Investment Property Owners Association of Nova Scotia. Before that, we heard Hannah Wood, the Halifax Chair for ACORN, speaking with the CBC's Haley Ryan. You're listening to Main Street on CBC Radio 1. My name is Preston Mulligan. We're back after the world this hour.